In this Mass of the Lord's Supper, there is an unmistakable emphasis on the Eucharist, and rightly so. We remember the institution of the Eucharist at the Last Supper, and we will end Mass with the procession of the Eucharist to our altar of repose. Our first reading takes us back to Passover, that ancient prefigurement of the whole Paschal mystery. And we remember that as with that original sacrifice, the true Lamb of God is given to us as food. Paul, in our second reading, gives us the one description of the institution of the Eucharist in Scripture outside the Gospels. He reminds us of our Lord's instructions to do this in remembrance of me. Even the response to our psalm is Eucharistic in character. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. And yet, for our gospel, we are given John's description of the washing of the feet, not a description of that first mass in the upper room. Why is this? First of all, we know that this was as much John's decision as it was the church's decision. In his gospel, John does not include the institution narrative at all. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all present Christ's institution of the Eucharist at the Last Supper but John instead gives us the washing of the feet. John certainly did not neglect to write about the Eucharist. The sixth chapter of his gospel contains the famous bread of life discourse, some of the most important passages in all of scripture for our understanding of this great sacrament. So why did John choose to recount this moment of the Last Supper in his gospel, unlike Matthew, Mark, and Luke? And why did the church choose this gospel for our reflection this evening? I think John and the church intend for this gospel to bring about a deeper understanding of the Eucharist in those who are already familiar with the other gospel accounts of the Last Supper. First of all, the washing of the feet was more than an act of charity. It shows us the priestly calling of the apostles. Priests of the Old Covenant had to wash their hands and their feet before entering the sanctuary to offer sacrifice. Before this meal, the disciples would have washed their hands, but now Jesus completes the priestly preparation for them. There is also a discussion of inheritance between Jesus and Peter, which should drive this image home. Jesus says he must wash Peter in this priestly way, or Peter would have no inheritance with him. In the Old Testament, the tribe of Levi was called to be the priests of the people. But, and when they reached the promised land, the other tribes all received an area of land as their portion or inheritance. The Levites, however, received no land because their sole inheritance was the Lord himself. John wanted to remind the faithful that in this moment, when the prescriptions for a new sacrifice are given to the people, God also gives a new priesthood to offer that sacrifice. But this act of foot washing not only shows us the New Testament priesthood, it also shows us something of the nature of the New Testament sacrifice. There's a notation, interestingly, in the Roman Missal that is surprisingly significant to this point. It says, the celebrations of the sacred triduum are to be carried out only in those churches in which they can be performed with a good attendance of the faithful, an appropriate number of ministers, and the means to sing at least some of the parts. It is, it is desirable that small communities join together in these churches to carry out the sacred celebrations in a more noble manner. This sounds a lot like a point in our first reading. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb. The Missal also notes that priests are forbidden from celebrating Mass today without any people present. These are more than practical points. This desire to gather a full sense of the faithful along with our gospel of the washing of the feet reminds us that this act of worship is not just a reenactment that we are invited to watch for entertainment or encouragement. They are attempting to show us that while the most important acts this evening are happening here on the altar, no one is called to be a passive observer. It's easy on this night of the Last Supper to focus on the remembrance part of Jesus' command, to do this in remembrance of me. 
But I think our gospel should remind us to put a proper emphasis on the do this part of Jesus' command. In this sacrifice, while Father Hahn and I will offer the bread and the wine as ministerial priests, we all, as a priestly people, by virtue of our baptism, must offer ourselves along with the gifts of bread and wine. The body of Christ, the Church, offered alongside the body of Christ, the Eucharist. This unbloody representation of Christ's sacrifice brings us to the moment when the Lamb of God was offered up for the salvation of the world. And every time that we are fortunate enough to be here, we must offer ourselves in prayer at this altar so that we can then offer ourselves indeed out in the world.